Hey, if you're on your journey to hit longer and straighter drives off the tee, uh, you may have run into, either through my channel or maybe somebody else's, the concept that the handle of the club needs to keep arcing around to the left as you go through the ball. Everything needs to be on a curve through impact if you're going to uh, create power and uh, keep stability in the club face and not have it flip over. Um, it can get you in some trouble though. It's a little bit of a trap unless you understand some more about um, swing plane. Um, you've seen my <laughs> trusty water-filled hula hoop before if you've watched my channel. Uh, I like to use this to illustrate plane and, and D-plane concepts, things like that. Um, I'm going to show you one more aspect of swing plane today um, that you might have overlooked and it might be the missing piece in your swing. So don't go away. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. Um, if you haven't visited my channel before, I'm on a journey to hit longer, straighter drives. Um, just be longer and straighter in general because it makes, for me, it makes the game a heck of a lot more fun when you're really knocking it out there down the fairway a long way. Don't forget at the end of this video to check out the links in the description below for my free ebook for um, distance tips and my free video on how to cure your slice. So you, if, you've, <laughs> if you've watched some of my videos, I'm sure you've seen me illustrating swing plane with my hula hoop here. I've got it back again because trying to swing the handle left, what you're supposed to be doing, you're not armed with enough information necessarily. So watch as, as I turn my body. We don't want the handle going out there, but instead we want it following the curve of the hips turning and exit around to the left and from camera view down the line it looks like the arms actually kind of disappear behind the body fairly quickly. However, let me set the hula hoop down. That could lead the average golfer trying this concept for the first time. It could lead you into a lot of pitfalls if you're not armed with a little bit more information about the swing plane. So for example, the average guy in an effort to make his hands go left might swing steeply and over the top this way. The effect that would have would be to have a overly outside in path. Yeah, maybe it looks like the handle is working around to the left, but the shaft is too vertical, so the swing plane is too straight up and down, uh, too vertical. We're going to tend to hit the ball on the heel a lot. We're going to tend to have uh, a lot of backspin, a lot of negative angle of attack or striking downwards on the ball. Uh, hitting a lot of weak slices that don't run hard when they, they kind of run into the right rough. Uh, I was just doing a playing lesson the other day with one of my students, kind of swings this way. And we, you know, we're, we're worked in our, working our darndest to get them into the opposite habit of um, shallowing his swing plane coming from the inside. Um, so let's take a look at the swings I just made on the hoop. If we're just looking at this like it's a crude uh, uh, plane, swing plane. So this would be a swing plane that would be outside in, but it would also be very vertical or what we might call very, very steep. Okay, now see the it's exiting left if I have the club following this angle. It is exiting left like we want to, but it's not going to be a good swing at all because it's going to produce a lot of pulls, tops, shanks, all kinds of bad stuff. So when we're talking about the handle path exiting left, because we know like the water ski boat example I always give everybody, if the boat turns left, and decelerates, the skier, which would be the club head in this case, is always going to accelerate rapidly and catch up and even pass the boat. And that's without even adding the advantage we have of adding torque with the wrists to straighten out and sling the club head through. A water skier just has a rope, doesn't have any additional pulling or pushing force um, to, to accelerate him. It's just using the laws of physics um, 
action reaction that he's catching up and passing the boat. So we like the hands, the handle path going left. It's a great concept, but we're going to have to understand that we've got to do that off of a much shallower plane coming into the ball this way. So if I take it to the extreme, like I've got a very, very short person, <laughs> the shortest person on earth is swinging a golf club. The swing plane might look like this. Uh, notice how the club will tend to come more severely from the inside into the ball, square up, and then rapidly exit around to the left. See, it's kind of baked into the cake when we make the the swing plane ridiculously shallow coming into the ball. It doesn't mean you have to be flat at the top. You can always be a, a normal and then drop it onto this uh, plane by sh a shallowing move starting down. We don't want it overly vertical for sure, and we don't want it overly vertical and left. Um, anything too vertical is pretty much a death sentence coming into the ball with a, with a real tall handle this way because it means you're probably standing up not turning and we'll get the handle going too straight up the fairway we can't really release the club effectively we're not using the ground very effectively so we're going to lose both power and accuracy that way but if we can get the swing plane to shallow out not only watch i can even turn if we use the driver shaft is our target line and I'll illustrate for you see we can even turn the plane inside to out a little bit you see this is a little bit of an inside out draw swing path say four or five degrees or something the lower I drop this you see the club is naturally exiting more rapidly back around to the left as opposed to a very vertical swing plane, you see the, the handle and the club would actually cross the flight line after impact if the plane was actually this. Now, of course, I'm taking the complete extremes here. You see this is not going to exit around to the left very well, and you're not going to get that added acceleration and squaring up uh, torque in the club, club head going into impact. So see, as we drop it shallower, the club naturally wants to exit more around to the left. Um, so the shallower the swing plane gets, the more of a requirement it is to turn your body out of the way, which is a, a, actually a good thing because most golfers, they just don't shift their weight and turn their chest enough. A lot of people stand up this way and they their chest keeps facing perpendicular to the target we never really get a lot of around motion and a lot of golf swings for the average guy so this could lead to something very good for you understanding this concept if you're like most people um, you're probably not shallow enough most golfers are above the the plane too vertical and outside in and it really makes it hard to square the club face. Most of the people I have who's come to me swinging like this are big slicers. So let's look at the difference in the club now. So you'll watch. If I'm coming into it this way, see that's much more of a shallow swing plane coming down. I could have been up here at the top and done a shallowing move to here and now as I'm turning, I'm trying to get the handle to follow up and to the left this way. So you see how shallow that is there? It's kind of riding my forearm from your perspective, my halfway down my bicep. As I keep turning, making the handle exit left, it accelerates the club. Um, however, I can still swing at it from the inside this way and still exit around to the left so that the club face won't have to flip over uh, abruptly so as we swing like this we can actually keep the face from going open to close quite as rapidly 
So understanding that concept that the plane of the swing, especially on a driver, is significantly shallower than most golfers are on, should be this way and around the corner like that. Um, take a couple cracks at a drives and we'll look at them in slow motion to finish this up. So you've seen the full speed, now you've seen the, the slow motion replay, and I've put a couple of numbers up on the screen for you. Take a look at the shot itself. Um, you can see that it helps you keep the body bent over and maintaining the posture when you're dropping the plane. And it certainly allows you to come and exit left without messing up your swing path. Actually, you can hit a draw from the inside and still have your hands exit left because of the nature of the or the measurement of the verticality of the swing plane so we're looking for a balance most people are too vertical most people need to be shallower um, you might look at some the you know the slot position of some of the great golfers on tv that you admire of course the way you would start practicing this is in front of a mirror first um, very slowly no ball first then you might take it to the range and just kind of dink some balls to get the feel of it so hey thanks for watching don't forget to pick up my freebies and the links are in the description below i'm steve and uh, if i don't see you in the next video hopefully i'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway thanks so much for watching